Hey folks, welcome to another video. This is Google Glass, and it's the Google Glass Enterprise Edition 2, which is the most recent version of Google Glass that came out. I've actually got a series of Google Glass here. This is the Google Glass Explorer Edition. This one had one gigabyte of storage and ran Android KitKat. This is a revised model of the Google Glass Explorer Edition that had two whopping two gigabytes of RAM and also ran Android KitKat version 4. The Google Glass I'm wearing run Android 8.01. The other difference between the two is the old Google Glass had a micro USB port and the Google Glass Enterprise Edition 2 that I'm currently wearing uses a USB-C port. There was a model in between that I do not own that was just called Google Glass or Google Glass Enterprise Edition 1. And that particular version used pogo pins and a special proprietary connection. Uh, it didn't last very long, and it ran on an Intel Atom processor, which was curious, as it was one of the few devices that was a head-worn display that ran on Atom, but it also ran a version of Android, still Android KitKat version 4.4. In this particular example, I wanted to show you what Google Glass can still do today. The old Explorer editions, unfortunately, being on a very old, unsupported version of Android, can't do much. This particular Google Glass can't do all that much either out of the box. In fact, I'll show you. It has a call center demo, which used to let you connect and do a demo call where you could see the video coming out of the glasses. There was also a card sample, which would just pop up what would look like a notification card. So if we look at that, this is the text layout. The text size is up to you. And cards were how Google Glass popped up notifications to you originally. There's a gallery sample. In this gallery, you'd have the photos that you take using the Glass EE camera sample. If we aim down here, we can see right here, look at that, it's my laptop with me recording this video right now. And those were the only samples that were available on Google Glass Enterprise Edition at the time that it launched. And eventually all of those were removed and replaced with just Google Meet. And eventually that was discontinued as well. So this device that I'm wearing on my head is completely discontinued. What you'll notice though, is I have another application here called Launchy. If I click on Launchy, okay, that's fine. Launchy is a traditional Google Glass application that was made way back for the Explorer edition, but also supports Enterprise edition. So you can see all of these different things that you can swipe to. You used to be able to say, OK, Glass, and then launch these things. But with the Enterprise edition, you actually have to swipe using the touchpad here. And you'll notice I've got a bunch of different things on here that aren't the call center demo, the card sample, the gallery demo, or the camera sample. Like, for example, I can launch into Google Chrome. And look at that. That is indeed my Google Chrome logged in as me. So with Google Glass and the Wow Mouse application and Voice Assistant all on here, I can do a ton. So if I go to Assistant right now, hey, Google, play Nine Inch Nails on Spotify. So now it's going to open my Spotify application that's already on the Google Glass. So now it's playing The Perfect Drug by Nine Inch Nails, which it randomly chose as a Nine Inch Nails song in Spotify. Uh, I am going to stop this, though, because not only can you not hear it, but it's very loud in the monoscopic ear speaker for me. Just an example of what I can do here. Um, obviously, I've got full Spotify. I've got Discord. I've got Chrome. I've got Google. I've got Instagram. I've got a bunch of stuff on here. I've got Telegram, so I can talk to people via Telegram using the voice assistant, or I can type using the mouse and <laughs> dragging over a very small keyboard. And then I've also got YouTube. So if I want to watch myself on YouTube, I can go to the YouTube application. Obviously, I can go 
my own channel here. And these are things I've watched recently in my history. I'm now watching a This Week in Tech podcast in, on YouTube via Google Glass Enterprise Edition 2. Now, another cool thing about this is, and I'm going to try to do this so that you can see the pinch on the screen here. Let's see. Can I go? Let's go to the top charts here. So when I pinch, that's when it loads. And you've got TikTok, you've got Instagram. To scroll, I'm using the sidebar here because it's a little bit easier for me. So you've got threads, you've got Telegram, you've got a PDF reader, you've got all of these different applications, Netflix, Macs. So another thing we can do is straight from this menu screen, I can say, hey Google, how tall is the Eiffel Tower? And it says it's 1,024 feet tall or 1,083 feet to the tip. Hey Google, what's the fastest route to Los Angeles from San Francisco? Now it's given me directions and while I have Google Maps on here, I do want to preface, those directions can be opened in Google Maps just by tapping on it, but Google Maps does not have GPS. Uh, and that's the one drawback with this is there's no GPS available for Google Glass Enterprise Edition 2. GPS was enabled as a tetherable thing with the older Google Glass models, but it was removed from this. You also can't wink to take a picture and you can't gaze up like that to make it wake up the device. So even though Meta's Orion project, the smart glasses of the future are going to have gesture-based clicking and, and things with your hand, and they're going to have a smart AI-based assistant to help you tell you things. And it's going to have a camera enabled and things of that nature. Google Glass, back in 2013, didn't have the ability to click like this and make a mouse work. That's actually driven by a company called DoublePoint with this Wow Mouse application on my Galaxy Watch. But Google Glass always had that assistant enabled. Google Glass always had the ability to have a heads up display similar to the one that I'm wearing right now. And while launch is a little bit slow and loading into applications can take some time, I'm finding myself using this particular product a lot more than I expected to in recent months. And it's really a testament to the vision that Google had way back in the forefront of VR and AR. I'm excited for what the future holds with things like Android XR, what Meta's building, what the folks at Xreal and Vitcher have built and are building for the future. But this device right here is the one that's compelled me to experiment more and use less to get more on my face. So Google Glass Enterprise Edition 2 does not ship with the functionality built in to have Google Media Services enabled. I had to actually route this using a step-by-step -step guide from someone that discovered how to route the Google Glass Enterprise Edition 2 that was published to Reddit. And I used Magisk and loaded Google Apps through that. So I have all of the Google Media Services built in that support this particular brand of Android and this particular version of Android. Some applications work great. Some applications require the Wow Mouse application that I'm currently using on my watch. I love the fact that I can have a window into a potential future by using these two products, a Galaxy Watch 4 and a Google Glass Enterprise Edition 2 from the past. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll probably be looking at past tech and how it connects to the future more in 2025 and beyond. It's something I've been really passionate about is exploring what I can do with that past technology and how it's led to the future today and potential future products that don't even exist yet. I'll be back with more content soon. Until next time, get out there and enjoy some VR, AR, or crazy old display technologies for yourself. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye now.